Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you to, this morning? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Get your communion ready. Get your communion ready. I'm going to uh, just speak to you a few moments, and we're just going to get to praying this morning. I want to say less and pray more. Say less and pray more. Hallelujah. Lord, I just thank you for these amazing women that are signing on to prayer today. I pray supernatural blessing over them. I pray supernatural wisdom over them. I pray supernatural strength over them. God, I ask you to give us eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to obey your word. God, let us be so in tune with your spirit that your will and your way is what's most important to us above anything else. I feel, I hear, I sense your call to pray and intercede like never before. I feel, I hear, I sense your call to fast and seek your face for the third great awakening, for a revival across this nation that will change the course of history. God, you love us. You have a will, purpose, and plan for this nation and for the people of this nation. And I do not believe for one minute that that plan is over. I believe that we have a destiny to fulfill and I believe, God, you're going to help us fulfill it. And I ask you for strength. I ask you for wisdom. I ask you for fortitude. I ask you for eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord. I ask you for humble hearts. God, give us humble hearts before you. Give us hearts of repentance, hearts of love, and hearts of understanding. Don't let us be self-willed. Don't let us be arrogant. Don't let us be proud, proudful. But let us be obedient to your spirit, God. Let us be obedient to your spirit. Strengthen your ladies, Lord. Strengthen your women across this nation. I thank you, Lord, for 200 right now, 271 altars, prayer altars that are rising up before you, Lord, as a burning incense, asking you for the third great awakening in America and across the world, asking you for a revival that can't be stopped, asking you, Lord, that your glory would descend on this nation and on our lives. We thank you, Lord, for your glory descending. We thank you, Lord, that you're giving us eyes to see and ears to hear, that we'll, we'll not be caught away in rhetoric, but that we will be caught away in your spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for 299 prayer altars this morning. Women that are dedicated to you, mothers in Zion, God, that are dedicated to your presence, dedicated to your will and way, not willing to let anything stop them from being faithful to prayer, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I want you to get communion ready. I want to start with communion. I really don't even want to say a word other than pray until we take communion. I want to give you a few little words of that I feel really strong from the Lord, things that I believe God's been speaking to me, and then we're going to pray. So get your elements ready. Lord, I thank you for your body. We remember your body today. I plead the blood of Jesus over every home and city and church that's represented on this prayer cast today. I plead the blood of Jesus over every family in America. I plead the blood of Jesus over this nation. I plead the blood of Jesus over the fivefold ministry. I plead the blood of Jesus over our government, our president, and every political leader in this country. I plead the blood of Jesus over every social economic mountain. I plead the blood of Jesus over every 
every leader and Christian leader and influencer, God, across this nation. I ask you, God, to give us wisdom, to give us wisdom to go in and out among your people. God, give us wisdom to know that it's time to pray and seek your face until the third great awakening is literally poured out over this country and across the world. Give us wisdom. Give us eyes to see. God, we take this. We take communion, Lord, for the stripes that you took on your back, for the healing. And God, we ask you to heal the heart and soul of America. We thank you for your blood. We remember your blood. We remember your blood, Lord. We ask you to forgive us and wash us and cleanse us, Lord, with your blood today. Once again, we remember what you did. The last few days, um, I've had it, and in, in, I can't even ex explain the level of burden that's been on my heart. It's been a um, a push, like a nudge from the Lord, and I purposely um, stay off all news media. My TV never comes on, never. Uh, the only few things I see uh, in, that I've even allowed myself to see in the last few weeks and um, month or over a month is um, prophetic words and, you know, religious leaders that are praying and speaking on uh, issues. So I purposely kept myself out as much as possible, as much as possible. I have seen a few things. I, um, I saw one in particular um, woman speak about an issue, but outside of that, that's really it. I've, and I've done that on purpose because I wanted to be able to pray in the Holy Ghost uh, without and and be able to hear the voice of the Lord and be clear. Because uh, sometimes too many voices, even if they're all right voices, can can muddy the voice of the Lord. And I have felt very strongly from the very beginning uh, when this COVID hit that the voice of the Lord needed to be the paramount voice in my life. And I believe it needs to be the paramount voice in your life. But with that being said, uh, in the last few days, I have felt a mounting um, burden from the Lord for this nation. And then last night, um, on a walk with my husband, he was telling me some things, and he's been reading and keeping up with stuff better than I have, and I couldn't barely get through the walk. I wanted to scream because I knew what I'd been feeling prior to that walk. God was already pressing in my heart the urgency uh, that we're in as a nation and the importance of prayer more now than ever before. It is very important that we don't get birthing justice ahead of birthing revival. If we get birthing justice ahead of revival, we'll miss the plan and the provision and this country will not walk out her destiny. And from the very beginning, I felt very strongly that if the American church, I'm talking about America now, I'm not talking about the world, I'm talking about America, that if the American church didn't rise up and pray, that our destiny would be aborted. But I heard the Lord say one morning that America will not go down in the flames of hell, but that America will arise in the prayer and in the altar of incense across America. But ladies, we have a part to play. And it can't be taken lightly. And we need to call forth.
influencers, Christian influencers with much more influence than Pastor Callie has and much more influence than, than maybe even you have. We need to call forth Christian influencers across this nation in the spirit that they will rise up and this nation will begin to pray and intercede. We cannot birth reformers, hear me out, and justice ahead of revival in prayer. Revival in prayer has to be our stand. We cannot be caught up in the fray or we'll lose our assignment. We cannot be caught up in the fray. It, and I'm not saying that these agendas and these justice cries are not valid. I'm not saying any of that. We've got millions of babies that are being aborted across this nation. We've got the blood of that on our hands as a nation. We need God to heal our nation. We've got racism issues that we need God to heal our nation. We've got so many. I could line item, item, all of them all day long. It, but it really is not what we should take up at this point. What we should take up as the church, no matter what side you're on or what you feel must be said, we must take up the mail of prayer and fasting and intercession because out in prayer and intercession is what's going to to position us for the healing that our country must have to walk out her destiny. And I felt from the very beginning that the enemy wanted to take America out before her time. Now listen, we all have a t listen, some at some point this thing's going to end. At some point, Jesus is going to come back, and this thing's going to end. And I've in, in Revelation, I don't consider, I don't say that I'm a Bible scholar, but I've studied the Word all my life. But I don't see America in Revelation. Now, maybe somebody does, and maybe I'm wrong. But I don't see America. But I also do not believe that America's destiny has been fulfilled yet and that our time is up. I believe that we are a part of the third great awakening. I believe we are a vital part. I believe God is calling this nation to prayer and fasting and to revival. This nation was birthed with a desire for religious freedom. This nation was birthed with an, a, an intent for people to come, for people from all over the world to come here and have religious freedom. Were we on the wrong side of certain issues in slavery when this country was birthed? Yes and amen. But that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about the intention for religious freedom, the intention for God, to, Jesus, to be Lord over this nation. And I am calling this nation back to its original intent, God's original intent, not the intent necessarily of our forefathers that may have been on the wrong side of several issues, but the intent of Jesus, the intent of God over this nation. I am calling this nation back to its original intent, and I am telling you, ladies, it is time for us to pray and fast and to call our sisters into praying and fasting and to call our brothers and husbands into praying and fasting. I am asking you for 10 days, for 10 days of prayer and fasting. I'm asking you 10 days to set yourself apart. I'm not going to tell you how to fast. That is between you and the Lord and your own physical condition. Whether you fast a Daniel's fast or you fast a couple of meals a day or you fast uh, completely and drink water or you fast and drink a shake once a day. I'm diabetic. I probably won't go uh, 10 days of water. I'm going to drink shakes every once in a while to keep myself, my blood sugar level. But I, I want you I'm telling you, it is time for the church to stand and to pray and fast and to get in our position. And I heard a pastor say this yesterday, and it resonated with me. The only stance we need to take is on our knees until Christ is formed in this nation. This is, the stance we need to take is on our knees until Christ is formed in this nation. Lord, I ask you to humble our hearts. I ask you to humble our hearts. I ask you, God, to give us wisdom. I ask you, God, to help us only stand at this point. The only stance that I am taking is the stance of being on my knees. 
until Christ is formed in this nation. I believe with all of my heart that America has a great, great mandate for this third great awakening. I believe with all of my heart that America is playing a huge part of revival across the world. And I am standing for healing in this nation and deliverance and for the heart and soul of America to be healed. I am standing for prayer. I am standing for Christ being formed in us until we see what the Lord has promised us as a nation. I am standing for holiness and righteousness and purity and repentance. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I remember when Daniel prayed and he asked for help from God. And the, the first day Daniel prayed, God heard him. And I believe when we started praying, April 1st, we've been praying. We're, we're on our third month. I believe God heard us the first day. He heard us the first day. No matter what the enemy has told us, he heard us the first day. But we can't quit. But Daniel kept praying. And all of a sudden, he got a revelation. By the time the angels got there, he got a revelation that they had had to fight principalities and, and they were delayed and it took them longer to get there because they had to fight spiritual principalities. And I believe there's a spiritual principality that's trying to wreak havoc over this nation and trying to abort our destiny as a nation. I believe it as sure as I'm living and breathing. I believe it. And we must pray because God is sending forth angel armies to help us. We must keep fighting the fight. We must keep praying the prayers. We must keep interceding. And I am calling for hundreds of you to fast with me for the next 10 days. I'm starting today. If you can't start today, start tomorrow. If you can't start tomorrow, start the next day. But I'm asking you for 10 days of fasting in any capacity that you can. I'm asking you for 10 days of intense prayer. I am going to be praying morning, noon, and night for this country and for our nation and for revival across the world and for the body of Christ and for the religious leaders. I'm praying and I'm calling forth influential religious leaders in America that will stand up and call for prayer across this nation. We need influential religious leaders to call for prayer like never before. And I, and I ask you, Lord, to begin to move on them by the hundreds Begin to move on them by the hundreds. I'm asking you ladies to begin to call your friends by, the, by every friend you can think of. Call for them fast with me and pray. Let's pray for America. Let's pray for the third great awakening. Let's pray that Christ will be formed in this nation. Let's stand in the gap and let's not let go of the horns of the altar. God is not through with this nation, but it is predicated. We are we are weighing in the balance. We are weighing in the balance. It is predicated on the church, the church's prayers. It is predicated. I'm trying to tighten my phone. It is predicated on the church's prayers. It is predicated on us standing up and being what we're called to be. And I want to read Isaiah 60 because I believe this is the will of God concerning us. I know this was written to Israel, but I believe that these scriptures are for the American church. If we will stand, it is not time for this country to be dismantled by the powers of hell. It is not time for this country to be dismantled by the powers of hell. But it is time for this country to stand in, un in unified prayer for the church of the living God in America to stand in unified prayer for the revival that God is sending to this nation and across the world. We are not through America. We have a destiny that must be fulfilled. But I am calling forth 10,000 mothers in Zion to pray. I am calling forth 10,000 men 
begin to pray. We must, our stance must be prayer. We, the only stance we should have at the church at this point is prayer. And when Christ is formed in this nation, then I believe God is going to raise up reformers. And there will be justice brought in many areas that justice needs to be wrought in. But if we try to, to bring in justice without prayer and revival, we are getting the cart before the horse. I want to read Isaiah 60 because I believe this is the word of the Lord. I heard a prophetic word last night and I'm going to post it. I can't think of the man's name. He's from Australia. But it was everything I have been sensing and feeling for days. It was articulated straight from heaven. And it was everything that I have been sensing in my heart. And I want to read Isaiah 60. This is the will of God concerning America in this season. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. I ask you, God, to let us see. Lift up your eyes and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar. Your daughter shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant. I declare that America will become radiant with the glory of the Lord. That your home will become radiant with the glory of the Lord. That your light will become and your life will become radiant with the glory of the Lord. And your heart shall shall swell with joy because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitudes of camels shall cover your land. The, the dromedaries of the Midian and the Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. Hallelujah. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Keter shall, shall be gathered together to you. The rams of Nebioth shall minister to you. They shall ascend with the acceptance with the acceptance on my altar, God, we are, we are raising. There are 429 prayer altars going up before you this morning. God, we ask you, God, we ask you that you will send forth and that the angel armies that you have assigned to America, that you sent the first day that we started praying, will begin to descend on, the, on this land. We call forth the angel armies that you have sent to help us to descend on this land. And God, we call forth the great, the third great awakening, a revival, a billion soul revival. We call forth millions of women and men and children and millennials and baby boomers and X, Z, Y, whatever your generation is, we declare that America is a nation of prayer. America is a nation under God. America is a nation where Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the Lord of this nation. We pray for our president. We pray God protection over our president. We pray for wisdom over him. We pray that he makes godly decisions. We pray God for supernatural help, God coming to him. We pray for wisdom over our legislature. We pray for wisdom over our Congress and over our Senate and over our mayors and governors. We pray, God, that you uproot and dismantle anyone in government that has an evil agenda that is being moved by the powers of hell. We come against it in the name of Jesus. We declare that there is a prayer revival and a holiness revival and a righteousness revival and, and, and a repentance revival uh, coming now, now in America. And justice will be birthed in America, but it will be birthed on our knees. It will be birthed 
with millions of people praying and seeking God, it will be birthed out of prayer and fasting. There are thousands of reformers coming in America. There is justice coming to America, but it cannot be birthed until prayer is birthed in America, until thousands and thousands of people are praying morning, noon, and night. This is a call from heaven. This is a mandate from heaven. We must stand in unity. unity. We must stand in solidarity for prayer. We must stand for holiness. Our stance must be on our knees. In the name of Jesus, God is calling us to be women of prayer. I ask you to pray and fast with me for the next 10 days. I ask you to post on this Facebook if or in, inbox me any way you can. Post on this post if you are fasting with me. I am asking for at least 100 of you to fast with me for the next 10 days. I'm asking for at least 100 of you to fast with me some kind of fast. Ask the Lord what you, you should do. I am asking you to pray several times a day, not just our eight o'clock prayer meeting, but to pray noon and in the evening, even if it's 15 minutes to pray for our nation and revival in this nation and that Christ would be formed in this nation. Revival must come before reformation. Hear me out. Revival, our only stance should be on our knees at this point. Revival must come. Prayer must be our, must be in place. There must be thousands, hundreds of thousands of people praying in America for before the Reformation can be birthed in order. It has to come in that order. And I got such clarity from the Lord in the early morning hours. I did not sleep much last night. I woke up on and off all night long crying out for this nation and crying out for you and crying out for our children and crying out for the world and revival and, and this last day revival and and I sense that we're on the precipice of the greatest revival we've ever seen. I'm asking you to read all of Isaiah 60 today. I'm leaving it for you to read and to declare over this nation. I love you so much. Be blessed and I'll see you in the morning. God bless you.